that's what's more fun for me. I like. spent most of my life as The hilarious Eddie Murphy is a groundbreaking performer. His diverse array of roles and unique style really resonates with all ages. Many call him a comedic genius, but he himself attributes his success as a comedian to keeping his jokes at a mainstream level. Admit it, we all love a fart joke. And Eddie agrees. He thinks we've all got similarities at the end of the day, and he draws his comedy from that. The only thing Eddie doesn't have in common with us is that unforgettable laugh. <laughs> like for so many, it began for Eddie on the stand-up comedy circuit. Growing up in Brooklyn, his talent was evident from an early age and by 15, Murphy was performing his own routines at youth centres and local bars. Soon enough, he upgraded to comedy clubs around town, wooing people with his dead-on impressions and hysterical outlook on life. After making numerous audiences giggle, he was cast as a regular on Saturday Night Live. SNL ignited Eddie's career and his popularity went through the roof. At only 19, Eddie stood out and by the end of his first season, he became the show's meal ticket. Murphy was also memorable because he came to SNL in an era when African-American characters were marginalised and parodied, not used as lead characters. Eddie broke down many social barriers during the early 80s and reflected on this later in his career. This is the most exciting period uh, for black artists in America. This is the uh, uh, black a new black renaissance, I think. This is the first time we've had so many black people excelling in all the different fields in showbiz and producing, directing, actors, actresses, uh, music, you know. Throughout the years, we've had different artists sprinkled throughout the times, but now we have so many black people that are doing, uh, that have showing diversity, you know, and I feel it, I'm happy, great. I feel like a part of it, you know. I feel like one of the catalysts because I was the first guy in his 20s on the screen, you know, making movies. Yeah. You know, so it's exciting to me. I love it. I love it. But Eddie's time on SNL would be short lived as he was drawn by the bright lights of Hollywood to star in his first film, 48 Hours. Playing alongside Nick Nolte, the pair had an amusing, antagonistic chemistry that won over critics and audiences alike. Many consider the film to be the birth of the wisecracking, buddy cop style of movie that's still being made today. In 83, the world got to experience his stand-up after he released Delirious. Massively popular and now a classic, it was full of cutting-edge content that some called offensive. It contains the F word over 230 times. Now that's a lot of funnies. At the core of everything that I've done as an actor, I've been a comedian, you know, so people when they come to see me, they're coming to laugh, they're not coming to, uh, you know, like when you see a Stallone movie, that's, you know, action and my movies are funny movies and I'm, I'm, I'm athletic and I'm, I'm still fairly young so I can do some, I jump around and do some stuff. But uh, for the most part, you're coming to see a uh, comedy. And the perfect balance of action and comedy was in Eddie's most notorious film, Beverly Hills Cop. Playing the character Axel Foley made Murphy a box office superstar and a worldwide celebrity. On top of his game, Eddie continued to juggle his comedy and acting with two standout projects, Beverly Hills Cop 2 and Raw. Raw was the follow-up to his stand-up comedy special, Delirious, and both sequels gained huge commercial success, each debuting at number one at the box office. Eddie would go on to make a trend out of starring in sequels, but whether successful or not, he always liked to keep the audience guessing. If you press the same buttons every time somebody goes to a movie theater, if every time you see them, you're doing the same shtick or the same jokes, They'll get bored with it, you know. But you have to make sure, let's say you do a movie like that's a sequel, like Beverly Hills Cop, we had to make sure that it, it was a movie that even if there were no other Beverly Hills Cop movies, it stood by itself, you know. You had to, and at the same time, it had to make the audience uh, have the same fun they had at those other pictures. So we had to walk that thin line and just do, uh, try to do original stuff all the time so you, don't feel, so you don't come off like you're repeating yourself. The turn of the decade brought with it some misfortune for Murphy, as many of his projects were considered flops. Another 48 Hours and Beverly Hills Cop 3 proved the rule that sequels don't usually surpass their originals. Murphy was searching for a new angle and needed a film to reinvent himself. 
So, after a few duds, Eddie found the best way to do this was play seven characters in the box office smash, The Nutty Professor. Playing multiple characters was nothing new for Eddie. He'd done that before, but never on this scale. Or in this case, breaking the scales. And I'm doing the type of thing that I like to do, you know. I, I, I like to do this uh, character stuff and do makeup. I always wonder how come other act more actors don't do it because it kind of frees you up in terms of what you can do on screen. So um, whenever I'm doing this type of thing, it's never hard for me. Playing the Clump family ironically began a string of family-friendly films for Eddie. He talked to the animals in Dr. Doolittle, owned a nightclub on the moon in The Adventures of Pluto Nash, and ran a daycare centre in Daddy Daycare. All that variety is well and good, but Murphy's highlight in this stage of his career had to be the infamous Shrek series. He voiced the lovable sidekick to Shrek, Donkey. The supporting role showcased his personality and charm, and the franchise was so popular, four films were made. Eddie embraced the change in the movie's production style and enjoyed the collaborative nature of voicing an animated film. Doing something like this, it's more collaborative than, than when I'm just, uh, it's just me and, and what I would do with my body and my face and uh, if I, my approach to a scene. And I found that the, the, the director and people involved are really specific about what they want, you know, so they kind of talk you through things. And then it's a trip to hear, you know, somebody give you a suggestion for like a small inflection that they want you to put on your voice and then you see that you know them draw you know how they wanted your voice to go because he was a little more this in the scene he was a little more angry or he was a little scared see that come out you know it's, it's a more group effort Eddie Murphy's been a standout in the world of comedy for the last three decades but with all the highs and success there have been a few lows and flops a big career fail was the film Harlem Nights it was his directorial debut, plus he wrote and starred in it alongside childhood idol Richard Pryor. The comedy crime drama had noble intentions, combining two of the best African-American comedians in a culturally significant setting. Unfortunately, it missed the mark for critics and fans across the board. Luckily, Eddie's got a different outlook on the way he approaches each project. I'm a very spiritual person and I follow my spirit and I do what my spirit tells me to do, you know, and I don't have a set uh, like, oh, I want to play this type of character and I won't play that type of character. I'm receptive to anything, you know, and when the right thing comes along, if it's serious, if it's funny, if it's silly, if it's low, but see, I'm, but to put it this way, I do, I just do whatever makes me, I get the most, uh, gratification from as an artist, you know. I do music albums and nobody buys my records. I do them because I love making music, you know, and that's the same way I'm about movies. I don't make movies because uh, I'm, I don't go into it thinking, let me do this because then people will come or how much will a movie make and I'm trying to make the audience do that. I, I do what uh, feels right for me. Luckily, the theory led to some career highlights. In 2006, he took on the role of R&B superstar James Thunder Early in the hit Dreamgirls. Playing this character was a breakaway from his usual funny roles, which helped to display his true acting talent. Murphy obviously brought the thunder because the Academy nominated him for Best Supporting Actor. Unfortunately, he didn't get the dream result and unluckily missed out on the prize. Murphy, though, didn't mind, getting straight back in the makeup chair playing multiple characters in the outrageous Norbert. There were mixed opinions from critics, but audiences rushed to the box office. Either way, Murphy backed the film and believed it was what his fans had been wanting for a while. Well, I wanted to do something a little edgy because I've been doing a lot of family movies, been doing a lot of stuff with kids and stuff, you know, Shrek and Daddy Daycare and Haunted Mansion, which are terribly cute films, but I wanted to do something that, you know, people have been coming to me, hey, when are you going to do stand-up? When are you going to do something that, you know, I won't see the Air Murphy movie, you know, with some with little air. So we said we gave them something a little edgy because that's what, you know, they've been waiting on. That's what I've been wanting to do for a while. Recently, Eddie's been fairly dormant in the industry. That was until news erupted he was going to co-star alongside Ben Stiller in Tower Heist. The film sees Eddie returning to what he pioneered in the 80s, the buddy crime comedy. Stiller clearly loved the experience and explained his admiration on set. He's pretty iconic, Eddie. And, uh, you know, for anybody who, for my generation growing up, you know, he's, you know, he sort of, it defines uh, a lot of what comedy is in the you know in the last 25 years, so it's pretty cool to work with him. Uh, and 
He's really funny. He's really smart. He's uh, very, you know, he's a great improviser. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, he's Eddie Murphy. It's it's really it's exciting to to work with him. I, 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 every day that I work with him, I'm I'm excited to be there, and I, I kind of feel like sometimes I feel like an audience because I have to watch him do his thing. I'm like, wow, that's. That's good. You know, that's going to be in the movie. Recently, there's been a mini resurgence for Eddie, culminating in the huge announcement he was going to host the Academy Awards in 2012. But then, as we now know, Eddie stepped down from his hosting duties due to the controversy surrounding his friend Brett Ratner. So Eddie Murphy may not be hosting the Oscars, but the re-emergence of his Hollywood career is certainly happening. And from performing those comedy routines in high school right through to being back in the limelight today, he's made us all laugh over the years. He really broke boundaries in comedy. He set standards and he created some unforgettable characters and movies. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.TV.